In Fairfield County, something new comes across my desk every day. Crimes are committed, cases are solved, and a community is made safe by the hardworking employees of the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office. Welcome to This Week with Sheriff Dave Phelan, the weekly program along LancasterOhio.tv. We're also carried by a number of radio affiliates here in Lancaster. Do appreciate you, the viewers and listeners that join us each and every week. The program is produced at Fairfield Christian Academy. I appreciate the students being here each and every week. Behind the scenes, our executive producer, Kelly Roberts. Uh, back this week is Judy uh, Seifert. Good to see you again, Judy, and welcome back. And uh, if you uh, missed last week's program, uh, Judy is the founder of Steffi's House uh, here in Lancaster. And we're going to show a video. We showed it last week, but it, it certainly is a wonderful video. Terry Sullivan with uh, Channel 6 in Columbus helped put this together. So let's watch the video, and we'll talk a little bit more about Stephanie's house. Yeah, she was sweet. She was an angel. By all accounts, Stephanie Seifert was a beautiful person who could light up a room with her smile. She touched so many lives because of her kindness and because of the person she was. But that kindness would cost her her life. I never dreamed this would happen. Never dreamed it. Seifert was rediscovering life in Lancaster after ending a troubled 20-year marriage to Kevin Adams, her high school sweetheart. Friends say Adams was verbally abusive to Seifert. Her parents would find that out later. It's hard to imagine, and we were so close with them all the time. And if, they, if people aren't talking about it, I mean, you don't know. But no one expected the violence that rocked a sleepy neighborhood last October. Lancaster <laughs> Adams somehow got into his ex-wife's Cleveland Avenue house and confronted her and off-duty Lancaster police officer Randy Bartow, who was visiting. He beat them and then left the house only to return with a gun. Please, Kevin, put the gun away. The horrific 911 call captured it all. Why did you do that? Adams killing Bartow and then pointing the gun at Stephanie. Kevin, don't point that gun at me, Kevin. Judy Seifert says she had to listen. I heard her first breath. And as a mother, I, I wanted to hear her last breath. And during those horrific yeah. final moments, Judy Seifert heard something that gave her comfort. Jesus, please help me. And you hear her praying, asking Jesus to be with her, God forgive her of her sins, and to go with her. Uh, he's screaming and telling her to stop, stop now, not to pray. She's oblivious to it at that point. Adams killed Seifert before turning the gun on himself. The months since have been rough ones for the Seiferts. Brandt tattooed pictures of Stephanie on his calves, one of her as a baby, the other as a young woman. Judy finds peace in telling others Steffi's story, a Facebook page warning other families about domestic violence. I get so many private messages on there where that page has already helped mothers of teenagers to break up relationships. One, a friend of mine from high school. The one thing women have to remember, when you get the courage to break away, you can't ever go back. You can have no contact at all. Brant Seifert says parents need to trust their instincts. If you've got that gut feeling in your stomach about the boy that your daughter's dating, stick with your gut feeling. Because I had that gut feeling. But now my daughter's dead. He wishes that parental instinct had kicked in 25 years earlier. I don't want any parent to go through this. It's, I don't know if I ever get over it. I don't think I will. Well, well, welcome, welcome back, and that certainly is an impactful video, and uh, I think that has to touch anyone that would see that video. It's certainly heartrending. When, when did you uh, produce that video? Um, Channel 6 News produced it totally. Uh, Terry came to our home and interviewed my husband and I, and um, she put it on the uh, news channel, and then a man, 
I'm not sure who it was, put it on YouTube, and that's where we got it from. So somebody else put that up. You know, now probably hundreds, if not thousands, of people have seen that video, and it's touched people uh, probably throughout the country. Yes. Now, um, last week, if, if uh, we had you on, but some of our viewers and listeners may have missed last week's program, uh, tell us what Stephanie's house is and, and what Stephanie's house and what you folks do. Okay, Stephanie's house is a command center. We get the tools and the contacts and the information to women to empower them to make choices to stop domestic violence in their lives and their children's lives. What, what would be some things, Judy, someone could do if they were aware or they suspected uh, someone was in a domestic uh, d uh, violence kind of a relationship? Talk to the woman, encourage the woman that there are places uh, for help, um, encourage them that you're not alone, that it's everywhere, it's, there's no shame to you. The shame is on the abuser, never the victim. And just to let them realize that they can do it. They have the strength, there's helps everywhere to help these women. And, and I guess why do you think some women stay in domestic violent relationships? The ones, the women that I've worked with um, these years, we've been um, a 501c3 since September 15, 2014. We've just had an office since May 1st. So all this time of working with women, the number one thing that seems to be the reason, finances. They have to walk away, no matter how long they've been married, they walk away, the abuser gets the home, what they've worked for, the money. They take the clothes on their back and what they can take and their children. They go to shelters. They're at the mercy of food stamps and help and trying to make a new life for themselves. And for me, that angers me. I think there should be some kind of legislation. I hope to be able to help to do this someday, that when it's proven that you're a victim of abuse, that the court will step in, have a law in the books, that has to be sold, split, and she gets half. And if most women had the means to live without their abuser, they'd do it. I'm sure that's true. Yes. I'm, I'm sure that's true. One thing I've noticed over the years where uh, there's been a lot of changes within, within policing, uh, when I first became a, a police officer many, many years ago, if we would go on domestic violence and the lady didn't want to file charges, we would go ahead and uh, that would kind of be it. Today, uh, we once if we do uh, uh, suspect or if we think there's domestic violence, arrests can be made right there by the officer. So there's been a lot of positive things that have come forward. And October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Yes. And so what are some things that are going to be taking place? October 6th, we're having a domestic violence rally there at uh, the bandstand in downtown Lancaster. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Department gave us permission. We will light the bandstand purple October 1st through the 31st to make the community aware that it is October Domestic Violence Awareness. And that would be a wonderful time uh, if there's uh, any, any of our viewers or listeners that are in a, a domestic violent uh, relationship to turn out and I know you'd love to talk to them and, and maybe at that event maybe could change things. You could get them some help or, uh, or you know, counsel them or get them in touch with the authorities. There'll be a number of police officers there that, that evening too. That's wonderful. Now, we talked uh, before airtime how important it is about uh, the next generation. And I know you've been going to schools and, and things. Tell us a little bit about when we talk about the next, uh, the second generation. I believe to stop it, you have to get to second generation. You have to empower those kids to understand, I don't have to have a life like this. I've got the greatest possession a young person owns is their own youth. They can set a course for their life. They can achieve anything. And they can look back and say, I can do better than this. I can reach out to the helps available to me. Steffi Sals goes to the Juvenile uh, Reporting Center the last Wednesday of every month and shares Steffi's story in the video, talk to these students. And then next month, I'll also be going to the high school to share about dating violence with the students. Um, the Juvenile Court has a mentoring program they're starting. I have a representative from Juvenile Court coming 
uh, next month to talk to us about that, where we might get on board with that too. So anything to do with youth that Steffi's house can get um, on board on, we want to do it. And I've often thought, you know, I think outside of you accepting you know, Christ as your Savior, uh, that's the most important decision. But the, probably the second most important decision that, a, that, a, that people make is who they're going to marry. And I'm surprised at how little thought goes into those kind of things and how uh, the, the, the people need to spend time together. They need to look at the signs. And let's say that there's, you're a parent out there and you suspect your daughter's dating someone uh, that it's not going well. They're maybe being isolated. Maybe they've shown some signs of abuse. Uh, what's some things a parent might be able to do? My husband uh, spoke about this, that his gut kept telling him something was wrong. But in our particular case, Stephanie and Kevin had a child together when they were 16. Okay. And that kind of changes the dynamics. Right. She was, you know, mesmerized by him. And so it was inevitable that when they graduated, they married. And um, he was in our family 25 years yeah. and never saw it coming. Wow. Never saw it coming. And, and that's, a, that's a little bit more, that's unusual, isn't it? Because most of the time there's uh, a history of, of, of domestic violence in these relationships. He was always a violent young man in high school. He was always toward men. He was always jealous of Stephanie. But there was never any violence against Steph. He was kind of hard on his kids because he and I butt heads about that. Yeah. But as far as my daughter, I, I, I still can't believe that he was capable and that he actually did what he did. Right, right. Um, we got about a minute left. Uh, Tell us uh, how, how to get in touch with Steffi's house, how, how our viewers or listeners may be able to do that. Okay, we're at 109 North Broad Street, Suite 300. Our 24-7 help line is 740-823-2000. We have steffishouse.org, and we also have a, a website or a Facebook page. A lot of people get in contact with us through the private messaging on Facebook. Judy, I, I appreciate uh, you coming in, sharing your story. I know um, this probably never gets easy, and all the work you're doing to save, look at that next second generation, and just the fact that, uh, um, you know, you're really an inspiration, and, and uh, I, I give you all the credit. And, uh, you know, praise God, there's people like you that can take such an awful tragedy and, and make it into something that's going to help future generations. Thank you. We're just about out of time. And again, Judy Seifert with Steffi's House. And um, so this has been uh, an important program. Till next week, same time, same place. God bless.